G'day guys, Jeff here, and uh, I actually am doing a duel with someone who caught my eye with the videos that he's released. Uh, up to date, he's only, uh, I believe he's only got 33 videos out there. On YouTube, he's name, known as Oplin77, but you can call him Colin, because that's how he introduces himself. How you doing, Colin? Very best. How are you making out? Yeah, not too bad. So listen, I got in touch with you because uh, I liked what you were bringing uh, to the YouTube channel uh, community in terms of Battlefield, um, and I found you, by the way, of Stoneface Lock, so I thought I would uh, do a duel with you to get you noticed because of the way you play, and uh, yeah, man, so I'd like you to take us through some of this gameplay. We picked out four clips, but uh, tell us about it. Yeah, well, the so the first one, uh, we're actually going through uh, defense on, on Laguna Presa, and uh, this is on the first base, and, and a second ago, you'll notice I, I highlighted the mini-map, and, and I guess the, the overall theme of this uh, video is to present a balanced defense that uh, that doesn't leave any gaps for the attackers to easily come through, so uh, back there, you would have seen me advancing and calling out to my teammate who, uh, you know, instinctively just cycled in to fill my position, and uh, what uh, what I find a lot is that the uh, the defending team tends to push up too far when uh, uh, when the game is uh, getting close to an end or or uh, you know even at this point in the game with with 60 tickets left and that's not a good strategy because I mean, you have to hold that uh, MCOM down I think for you know for 60 tickets and uh, all it takes is is one attacker to get behind your line and, and the game is uh, or at least the base is gone so quickly so that's an interesting point that we spoke about uh, before recording but it, along with what you're saying, if they, if your team pushes forward, if you want to reverse the role and you're attacking, that's the best thing for you because you can actually sneak behind and plant. Exactly. Uh, so, so people need to think about uh, you know, is it, instead of being as greedy K, uh, KD whores, they need to think about um, you know, if I push forward and everyone else pushes forward, then we're going to get you know, flanked or at least uh, taken from behind, and no one likes to be taken from behind. I certainly don't. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but that's just it. But when, you know, if you, get, uh, why don't you talk about how we were discussing about reversing your thoughts on offense, defense? You know, yeah. So, you know, if I'm encountering a defense like this, uh, what I'll attempt to do is, is sneak behind enemy lines, and and I think that I, I freeze frame later on in this clip to highlight it. But uh, what I'll try and do is is sneak back there without being noticed. And and what I don't want to do, uh, want to do is engage any defenders if I don't have to. So if I have to to shoot someone to defend myself, I will. But other than that, uh, I don't want them to know I'm there until I uh, I can actually have my entire squad spawn on me and then we can start pushing to the MCOM station but uh, one of the opponents does the exact opposite of that for, for no reason he shoots me in the back I call out his location and he is gone uh, he never gets anywhere near it Right. Something I actually do with what you're, what you were saying just here is uh, I look at the scoreboard and see if we've got some clan tags that are similar or the same in the other team. Yeah. Because if they're not similar, then I know that I might be able to make a bit of noise and they're not going to communicate it. Um, like I might knife someone and I'm, I know I'm going to be okay about that. But you're right. If you're going to go full noise and you don't have an engineer's kit, then you need to watch out because you're going to get taken out. Exactly. And here's that clip about that guy you're talking about. Yeah. So had he just, uh, you know, there, there was no reason for him to take me out at that point. So if he waits, then he has a much better chance of uh, reinforcing his position with some squad mates and uh, he might actually crack the defense. But unfortunately, he's not able. Well, unfortunately right. for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fortunate for you guys. Exactly. So, with the charge at Alpha here, what what's your general tactic uh, anyway? Well, at, at I, I know two of you are going in here. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're down to like five tickets, so we basically rush it. We're not uh, we're not leaving anything to chance, and uh, we had already pushed them back. We knew that only one or two had uh, had come in, so. Uh, you know, typically a well-placed place grenade is going to wipe out a couple of us, but uh, I, just, I wasn't feeling vulnerable at that point, and just to make sure they didn't get the uh, MCOM destruction, uh, I decided to, to back up my teammate. All right. And then we're moving on to the next clip. Yep. So, Balparizo. Yes, so so right here I'm, I'm running the engineer kit, and... Uh, uh, the point of this clip was basically to illustrate, uh, you know, what can be a really good tactic in one situation, uh, you know, may not work out for you in another, and if that's the case, then, then stop doing it. Because uh, in this situation, uh, our team is not actually presenting uh, the best defense. Uh, we're pushing up too far, and really, it, it should have been a breeze for them to get through us. But because they keep trying to flank to the left... By myself, I'm almost able to hold that team off, and uh, it takes forever until uh, till my squad mates respond to my calls for help down the left. 
and uh, by the time the enemy smartened up and, and started uh, establishing some mobile spawn points to the right, uh, I think they only had about 10 tickets left, so it was a pretty easy victory for us. Right. And what's your thoughts on the UMP? Um, uh, at this point, I was just using it to, to rank it up, and uh, really, it's it's not my uh, my favorite SMG. I find the iron sights are, are really tough to use, so overall for me, I think the best SMG at this point, uh, with relation to, you know, the iron sights, the look and feel, and, uh, and the time to kill, are probably the XM8 Compact. And right. for a long time, I used the uh, the AK-74U. I, I like the more open concept iron sights, and, and those two guns work pretty well for me, depending on the situation. Yeah, I haven't reworked the numbers or looked at Den Kersen uh, after the patch, but uh, XM8 was strong for the engineer's kit before the patch. Yeah. I don't think much was changed in it, so I think it's probably one of the best. Yeah, absolutely. To use. Yeah. And you know, right. the UMP would be uh, would be better if not for the uh, the small magazine. Yeah, the magazine, and the, you're right, the iron side kind of crowds up the screen yeah, when you're, yeah. you're looking down it, so it's kind of pain in the ass, uh, but you don't want to give up that slot all the time. No, absolutely. I always run either explosive upgrades or um, or the ammo upgrades if I'm using engineer on the attack, so I, I never have room for optics on my on my SMGs. Right, you're shooting a teammate here as well, which is good. Yeah, you surprised me. Eh? <laughs> so you do, you do something here that I wouldn't like, but there's an enemy behind the left wall there still. You did shoot at them, and... Uh, so, okay, I know, but I, I know at the same time Alpha was almost going to be destroyed, so you had to uh, well, rush it. Well, actually, I got taken out from a grenade from another angle at that point. Uh, what I saw was I shot at him, and uh, as soon as I saw the kill assist score come up, I thought I had wiped him out, so that's why I went for the disarm. Right, right, right. And there was a quick win. Yep. All right, so the next one. So the point of this next clip is, uh, you know, something that uh, I feel very strongly about, and that's always to, to keep going, even uh, even when you're uh, you're running low on tickets on the attack, because anything can happen. And uh, I I play by myself, or I used to play by myself quite a lot, and I'd wind up on squads where, you know, once they get down to to 10, 15 tickets, everyone straps on the ghillie suit and just plays for their KD. And uh, in in this situation, uh, I think we were down to eight tickets when we start the clip. And I called it to a teammate, you know, let's go get it. And uh, he drove a really smart route to avoid anti-tank mines, and, and we uh, were able to just overwhelm the station. And I'm sitting here with a medic, and as our uh, as our teammates get mowed down, he's picking them back up. So at one point, I think we go down to a ticket count of, like, one. And uh, fortunately, the enemy never threw a smart grenade or an RPG into this room, which would have ended it, but... Uh, yeah, it would have ended it completely. Yeah. But you mentioned the medic. That's an interesting point. Uh, sometimes I tell my teammates not to spawn back if we're that close and we've got some medics on the ground. But you're right. Medics are the required uh, class when you're talking about uh, you know, 10 tickets and below. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, he, he did a good job of, uh, of making sure we, we survived that onslaught and, and took the, the MCOM station. All right. And here we go on Isla, and yeah. So what I what I wanted to illustrate here is uh, you know kind of a counterpoint to what I was talking about on uh, Valparaiso, where the team kept doing the same thing over and over again, which uh, allowed uh, allowed us to hold them off pretty easily. And in this situation, uh, our first attempt to take uh, to take Bravo here, actually, uh, you know, I, I take a sneaky approach. I'm using a silenced weapon, and what I want to do is arm it and then push forward and try and pick a few uh, uh, defenders off. And unfortunately, they they get the disarm. But then what I'm yeah. gonna, what we're going to do is then mix it up and uh, come in on a tank. And you'll, you'll see me coming in as the tank gunner and and spotting for AT mines and and trying to provide some cover fire while a teammate takes it. And that doesn't work, and, and, you know, we switch it up one more time and basically brute force it from the bottom of the stairs by Bravo. Right, and I saw you just got overrun there by three, so here's the tank approach. Oh, I actually like this approach. Uh, what you've just done is actually, and explained, is exactly what uh, myself and Hypermile and a few others do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we try, the, we try that quick approach first, uh, especially since they patched the, uh, the alpha. Building. <laughs> yeah, that that makes this a much tougher fight now that uh, that the alpha building's been patched. So, uh, if uh, if I was to uh, to try and hold off, if, you know, when I'm on when I'm on defense, uh, I think that this base is one of the easier ones to hold them. This one of the first one, and if you're uh, facing a smart attack who who can uh, use the cover of of some of those fences to flank all the way behind on the final base, then uh, it becomes a, a pretty difficult task to defend that one. So. 
uh, once once you take this one in a hard fought battle, I find that uh, sometimes the defense basically crumbles and and uh, the last base is is pretty easy. Yep, then that that's uh, pretty much what we find as well. Right on. Good stuff. So we're coming to a, a close soon here. I assume you get this station. We do. Yeah, I think <laughs> I cut it off, but we did get it. <laughs> Right, okay. Oh, well, thanks, Colin, for dropping by. Um, I hope everyone uh, checks out his channel. I'll put a link in the, the right-hand side and uh, in the description. But, uh, yeah, thanks for coming by. Well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. No worries, man. Let's see if we get a few more kills before this ends. <laughs> ah. No, <laughs> just a thanks, distraction. Man. Cheers. <laughs> thanks, mate. Cheers.